So we've now reached a stage of the tutorial where we have a ground frame over here and we have also created a segment. So the next step in building our mechanism is to include a joint. Now the segment, the, the mechanism that we are actually aiming for is a simple planar mechanism. And so the joint that we will be creating between the segment and the ground will be a, a simple revolute joint. But if I were a beginner with anybody, I may not know the name of the class which uh, creates this revolute joint object. So let us go to the help resources in anybody. I'll click on the help drop down menu and go to the any script reference manual. And over here, you do have a search functionality. And in this search box, I am going to type in revolute, oops, revolute joint. And if I scroll through the search results, uh, there seems to be one particular, uh, one particularly promising candidate. And this is the any revolute joint class. And the description for this class does indeed confirm that this will let me create a hinge join, which allows rotation only about a single axis. Now, if I were to look down at the expected members of the class, so these are the properties that you, uh, or these are the, the numbers, or they could be objects belonging to other classes themselves. But these members are what define the object, the any revolute, jo the any revolute joint object that we will be creating. And if I look at these expected members, it seems to be that there are two mandatory uh, members, and both of these are actually objects belonging to the class any ref frame. Now I can tell you, and you or you can even read this from the reference manual, that any ref frame is the class that uh, creates, it's the parent class for any object that is associated with a coordinate system. And what we do with these two reference frames is actually given here in the description. So these two frames must be the reference frames that are joined. So the moment you read this, the, it's most apparent that uh, the ground reference frame has to be one of these two. And the other reference frame, or the other any ref frame object should be uh, some sort of a, a point or a node. Uh, so this reference frame should be associated with a node that lies on segment one. So the, the moment we give both of these reference frames to the class, uh, any revolute joint, it will create a revolute joint which uh, connects both of these in a, uh, in a in, in, by enforcing a planar constraint. But the problem is that we have the ground reference frame, but if you think back to the time when we created the segment, we didn't really add a point on the segment for connection to the ground, to the ground frame. We just specified the inertial properties and just left it right there. So we now need to go back to the file segment.any and actually include uh, an additional reference node on the segment one object. And this will serve as our connection point between segment one and the ground. So I will now close the reference manual and we are now back on the main file where I will open segment.any by double clicking on the segment.any text. And over here, we now see uh, the definition for segment one and within the scope of the segment one object, which is given by this curly brace up here that I've just highlighted and this curly brace down here, we need, we'll just create some space over there. And I will then open up the class tab on the which is on the left of my any script window and over here i will search for the class that helps me create this reference node on segment one and i can tell you that the name of this particular class is any ref node and any ref node is the child class or is one of the child classes of the parent class that is any ref frame and you might remember that any ref frame was the class that was specified in the any script manual so over here, I'll go to any ref node, right click and say insert class template. So I need to give a name to this any ref node object and I will call this the ground connection node. And this any ref node object has two optional parameters that have been commented out. I will leave out the second one that is ARL. I will leave it to you to look that up in the reference manual. And I'll only focus on SREL. Now SREL is a three dimensional vector. You can see that it has three elements and these three elements actually specify the location of this ground contact node in the local coordinate system of segment one. So I'll go ahead and just fill in a value of minus 0.3 for the X coordinate of this node while leaving the Y and the Z coordinate to be uh, zero. And we'll see what this does in just a second. So I'm gonna save this file now and close it. 
So now that we've made a change to the model, let's try reloading it by clicking on the load model button that's on the top of your screen. And when I do that, the model seems to have been loaded successfully. And I'll then click on the window drop down menu and go to the model view. Now, when I open the model view, you can now see that we actually have a new point. The node that we just added is right here. While this is obviously what we saw earlier, which was the coordinates or the, or the uh, visual representation of segment one. So if you look at it, this particular node, the ground connection node is actually lying on the X axis. This is the label for the X axis. So the X axis is actually pointing this way. And because we specify the coordinates to be zero along the Y and Z axis and minus 0.3 along the X axis, that is why you have the node ending up here lying on the negative X axis. So I'll go ahead and now close this window with the ground connection node uh, now created. The next section will deal with actually using the any revolute joint class to construct our joint.